Hi everybody, I'm Marla with Nine Health, and I'm here today, a special treat, we're at the West Metro Fire Training Center, and I get to be in a fire engine truck. Isn't this the coolest thing? I think everybody wants to actually have this experience, so I thought I'd take advantage of it. We're gonna be talking about safety here, coming up with the 4th of July. We're talking about all things summer. We're talking about barbecue grills and fireworks. And we're gonna be joined by uh, Captain Joe Passmore. So hold on a second, I'm coming down. All right. That was so fun. Thank you for letting me do that. My pleasure, Marla. <laughs> thank you. Nice thank to you meet for you. joining us today. And you are um, going to help us understand a little bit about this time of year and the 4th of July. If you guys have questions for us, go ahead and send them in and uh, we'll see you on the Facebook page. I'm going to share the, this, this on our Nine Health page right now. So if I'm looking down, don't worry. But um, go ahead and ask us your questions. Kat is behind the camera. She'll ask the questions. We're going to uh, ask Joe, Captain Joe here, some of the questions that we have about the safety of fireworks and summer safety. You know, now is the time of year when everybody wants to be outside and we're either doing fireworks or barbecuing or swimming or whatever. And so um, coming up on the 4th of July, the, there may be some fireworks happening. What do we need to really pay attention to so that we can uh, be safe during this time? So the important thing to remember is that certain uh, fireworks are considered illegal in the entire state of Colorado. And what those are are fireworks that either explode like firecrackers or they're actually uh, propelled off the ground. So any type of rocket, a handheld uh, Roman candle uh -huh. would be Ill illegal. Colorado does classify some of the fireworks as permissible and those are allowed uh, in the state of Colorado. The thing to remember about that is that within certain cities, all fireworks are illegal. For okay. instance, Lakewood, all fireworks are illegal. So even the little ones that are on the ground, the sparklers, they're all illegal in Lakewood? That is correct. Okay. Well, that's important to know because I didn't really know that. So uh, would you recommend people check their individual city where you live sure. to be sure you know what is legal for yes. your area? You, you can always check the county. Jefferson County's uh, Sheriff's Department can provide that information to you okay. also. Right, okay, and like Denver and Aurora, all those places, check check each place because it's different. It is. Some of them are Ill illegal no matter where you are. That is correct. Yeah, um, but some of them like the sparklers and stuff, I, I see people do those all the time and they hand them to little kids, is that okay? So, uh, fireworks, even permissible, should be supervised by an adult. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to really just kind of gauge the the aptitude of your own child if you're going to allow them to participate. Mm -hmm. uh, the state doesn't allow any fireworks to be so, uh, sold or even handled by somebody that's under 16 years of age. Okay. So it should always be in a, a supervision of an adult. So yeah, that, I think that's probably pretty reasonable and sensible. And then you say there's some other precautions that you could take if you are going to be doing some fireworks. What, what are those? Sure. So once you purchase your permissible fireworks, <laughs> yes, be sure uh, you do that. Make sure you're on a, a concrete area. Set the uh, fountain, which typically be, happens to be one permissible fireworks, on okay. the ground. Uh, okay. Light it, move away, and uh, always have things like a bucket of water handy in okay. case the wind blows over the fountain. And now you are pushing that fountain towards your bush. Uh, have some means to actually put out a potential fire. Okay. Uh, if you light something and it doesn't go off, just leave it until you're done shooting off all your fireworks and then pick that up, place it in the bucket of water and leave it until the next day and then you can dispose of it properly. Okay, and, and that's because maybe that uh, firework is going to go off, it's still burning or something. It can. Is that right? It can. Okay. It may have something in the fuse that just slowed it way down. Okay. So it's okay. just best to be safe. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good tip because I can see us going over and picking up something that hasn't gone off and just thinking, oh, it's not going to go, it's a dud or something. Correct. But it might be just slow. Might be slow. <laughs> okay, good. So have water, be on a concrete surface really monitor kids. What are some common things that you might see as injuries with um, these home fireworks? So typically uh, people might grab the wrong end of the, the sparkler, uh -huh. which can get pretty hot. Um, 
with permissible fireworks, as long as you're following the rules, you don't see many injuries. The one we just gave the example of, of not going off, you never want to go over and look down yeah. to see what had happened. Uh, right. That may cause severe face, eye, and respiratory type yeah. injuries. Yeah, that could be bad. That could be bad. Okay, so fireworks, check uh, if you, they're legal, um, and then really be kind of cautious with have some water on hand. Is a hose okay, or is a bucket of water much better? So a hose is fine with a nozzle in okay. case something catches on fire, like okay. if you're literally too close to some dry grass or something, a hose should be able to extinguish that. Okay, okay, good. All right, now we're gonna move over to the barbecue area. So a lot of people are gonna be out barbecuing their hamburgers, their hot dogs. I don't know, what's your favorite Fourth of July meal? Um, I like hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, who doesn't love a hot dog, especially Fourth of July, right? So what are some safety tips? So uh, barbecue grills, you know, relatively safe or what? They, they are, okay. they are. Uh, so the, the regulations on the propane tank, so we just kind of start from the bottom. Okay, yeah. Uh, they actually have a manufacture date stamped on them, and then in 12 years, they actually need to be recertified. Okay. Most of the time that gets swapped out at a propane exchange, or when you take them to a propane filling station, they actually will note that the tank's out of date, and we'll just exchange that for okay, you. Okay, good. So putting it, back into your grill um, just need to make sure the connections tight typically you can smell propane if okay. you have a little concern that maybe you you can't smell it you can always use a soapy water solution okay. and spray around the connection and when you turn on the tank it will actually bubble if it's leaking around the hose oh that's a fitting. great tip that's a great tip so, so you would just put this and, and connect it to the hose but do you want to make sure anything here that it's off and, and all that before you do anything down there well, typically you start or you end the day by turning everything off right I'm just going to make the assumption that if you're putting propane in there nothing is turned on okay very good and then you, once you get that all done then turning on the grill is there any trick to that so typically you want to go ahead and open up your grill uh, most grills actually have one burner that's designated to be turned on when you hit the igniter. Okay. Because it's the closest one to the igniter. So make sure if yours says that, just go ahead and turn on that one first. So we've turned on our propane bottle. I come over here, I turn on my burner and just start the igniter until it fires up. And then I can actually turn on the appropriate number of burners depending on, on okay. how much I'm actually cooking. Okay, and it matters if it's clean, not just for your food, right? It does. So the tendency is if you have a grill like this, a lot of people clean it after each use. The way that's typically done is once they take their food off, they leave the grill on to kind of burn off some of that excess grill. I would encourage you to set a timer okay. of five to ten minutes because it's easy to go in, finish your meal, visit with your family and friends, forget about the grill, uh -huh. and then it overheats and it can tend to kind of mess up your uh, temperature gauge on the lid, uh -huh. or worse, I've seen them actually crack. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Cast iron lids. Okay. Because it gets hot. So, but cleaning it's important because that grease can get in uh, and cause a fire. Is that right? It can. Okay. So, that will typically you see that in the form of little flare ups uh, oh, okay. on the grill. Uh, depending on the size of the flare up, you could easily just turn off the burners and just set it down, and it will kind of take self take care of itself. Um, a good way to clean a grill once it's all uh, cooled down and everything is just put it in a bucket of soapy water, the great, the great, oh, this, and, take it out. and all the pieces. Okay. And just kind of scrub them up. You should do that probably a couple of times a year. Okay. And okay. then just vacuum out. I use a shot back actually to clean out the bottom of my grill. You know, I've never done that. That's probably a really good tip. <laughs> it, uh, and it's more safe, right? It, it is. You won't yeah. ca catch fire. Clean, that clean way. is better. Yeah. And so you were telling me that propane grills actually uh, are one of the leading causes of fire, not the charcoal like I would have thought. They are. They're responsible for 85% of residential fires. Yeah, so very important. And, um, you know, I know in my community where I live is a townhome, and we, we actually don't can't have these uh, propane tanks. So, is that uh, a rule? Well, within West Metro Fire Protection District, uh, the fire code does not allow the use of a gas grill or any type of pellet or charcoal grill 
on a multifamily. So that could be a condo, an apartment complex, yes. unless the deck is act actually has a sprinkler. Most of them aren't. So most grills uh, and stuff are actually illegal in multifamily dwellings. Okay. What is legal would be the small camp stoves that have the little one pound green can. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that you can purchase at a big box store. Okay. What else do we need to be very careful about in the summer kind of weather? Well, a lot of people get out and, and they want to do other activities. So uh, typically you're going to have those simple scrapes and, and things like that. Um, and you just have to kind of gauge, is it something you can take care of yourself or do you need to seek additional attention? Right. Like at an urgent care or something. Right, and I bet you guys see a lot of those kinds of accidents. What, we do. Yeah, what do you see mostly and what's your best advice for us? So probably some type of bicycling accident. Uh, we're a very outdoor uh, oriented state. Yes. Uh, people enjoy their outdoor activities. Um, so a lot of people are, are mountain biking and falling off their bikes or, uh, you know, as the as the winter months uh, kind of go away, the sand is still there from uh, oh, yeah. the sanding of the streets. The streets so yeah. you have to just be careful cornering and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. And if you do fall or whatever, it's always a good idea to, to stay and watch, ask if people are okay and, and help them out and, and like that. I mean, I think that's just courteous. We're courteous in Colorado. <laughs> it is. And how do you know when to call people like you? Like, when, do, when is it time to call 911? Like, when do you know? Well, when, when you think that it's something that you can't take care of yourself. Okay. Or if you've lost consciousness or don't remember what happened, that's always a good indication that you need to call 911. Okay, yeah. And if you bandage it up and, and it you know, seems to be stopping bleeding, you, you should be okay you should be unless okay. you start developing something that would indicate maybe you have an infection that may, might be a little more than just simple redness around okay. the wound. Okay, so just good tips from, from your, your fire department here. Um, if you guys have specific questions, go ahead and still type them in. We'll try and get your questions answered. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and sign off today for this uh, edition of our Help Happens show. And, uh, so Marla, what we would like to do is we're going to present you oh, with, this, no way. with this helmet, but you're going to need to come back for additional training. I need additional training. I'm sure that's true. But thank you so much. This is amazing. Should I put it on? Sure. All right. Okay, everybody. Here we go. We're going to sign off now, but uh, ask us your questions. We'll see you next time.